past. I think we all have. And I began to ask the Lord to give me some direction. And actually, some of this came out of my daily devotion and I was reading in the Psalms. So we're going to talk about sleepless nights tonight. Let's pray. Father, uh, thank you for your word and open our hearts to receive what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, today's text is taken from Psalm 77. We're going to just kind of go through this psalm this morning and look at the psalmist. You know, psalms are so great because sometimes they put into words things that we know, but we can't always articulate. Amen? Sometimes we, we feel a certain way, but the psalmist tells it for us. So he says in verse 1, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. Uh, I cried with my voice. Voice, obviously, our words are important. Um, in Hosea, he told ancient Israel, uh, if you're going to repent, come to me with words. God, God expects us to articulate what we feel. Um, I have, I, I'm certainly no expert in marriage counseling, but I have done a little marriage counseling and I can tell you that men are not really good at expressing themselves nearly as good as women. Oftentimes men will clam up. Well, she knows I love her, and when it changes, I'll tell her. You know, it's like, okay, all right, we got you. So it's the same way with our relationship with God. We need to do more than just think about that we love the Lord, we need to tell him with our voice. We need to cry out when we're hurting and say, God, I'm hurting, or God, this isn't fair. Or, God, I don't understand. You know, sometimes God seldom answers the, the question, why? But one time I remember lying on my bed, hot tears coming down my face after uh, Deborah had her midlife crisis, and I said, God, I don't understand. And he answered that question. I mean, immediately he gave me a verse just dropped it in my heart i think i don't understand is a lot different than than why god doesn't always have to tell us why but he does want us to understand sometimes things and the psalmist here is 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 asking god he's telling god he's crying out with his voice and he says he listened aren't you glad god is always listening amen I mean, you may not feel like he's listening, but believe me, he's listening. In the day of, trouble, day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. Now, you know, our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotion. And we are looking for comfort. When we cry out to God, we are uncomfortable. We are going through something. Something is gnawing at us. Um, he, he says in the day of trouble I saw the Lord and it ran into the night so this is something that's not going away it started out sometime during the day or maybe days ago and now it, it's not any better he, he'd rather go to sleep he can't sleep it's ran into the night now and it has not ceased and his soul can't be comforted he, he, he's trying to say okay alright think about this think about that he can't go to sleep his soul can't be comforted and, and boy, this poor guy is in a shape, and he, his trouble ran into the night. And my mind and emotions uh, controlled me, is what he's saying. My soul would not be comfortable. His, his mind, have you ever like went to bed and you just couldn't stop thinking? We've all done that, right? And your mind is just spinning. And of course, the emotions are controlling him, and they're not letting this poor guy sleep. And he says in verse 3 I remember God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Well, you know, it's one thing to remember God, but doesn't that sound kind of almost unbiblical? I remembered God and was troubled. You would think I would remember God and I was comforted, but he says I would remember God and I was troubled. Have you ever, like, looked around and, and noticed that it seems like sometimes other people um, are doing okay and you're, you're not, you know? Sometimes you remember God and you remember all the promises of God and yet you don't see them in your life. That can be troubling. Like, what about me, God? You said you love me. And so he complained, and his spirit again was overwhelmed. That's a lot that means just pause and think about this poor guy. 
he he was he was overwhelmed. Have you ever been overwhelmed before? Have you ever have you ever just feel like Lord, I just I don't think I can do this. I can't take this. Um, you know, psychologists have a have a really hard job differentiating between people who are truly suicidal and people who are just overwhelmed. Because sometimes people will say things like, I just wish I could die. And they're not really suicidal. They're just looking for a way out of the pain. They're overwhelmed with grief for what they're going through. And they just want the pain to stop. And so they may make these blanket statements, I wish I'd even, you know, and use that, well, that's not very spiritual. Moses said it, Elijah said it. Come on, get real, guys. We get overwhelmed. We want a way out. And, and they said, God, just kill me. Just take me out of here. So, Salah, think about that. We've all been there. This person ha, has a relationship with God. He's talking to God. He's not a heathen. He's, he's got a relationship with God. We might say in the New Testament vernacular, he's saved. But he's troubled. And he's overwhelmed. Do Christians get troubled and overwhelmed? Yes. And you know, it just bugs me, people who put on those Christianese faces and say, praise the Lord, glory God, hallelujah, I'm blessed, you know. And we are blessed, but sometimes we're troubled. Sometimes we're overwhelmed. In verse 4, he says, you hold my eyes waking. I'm so troubled that I can't speak. You know, my eyes are awake. You ever tossed and turned? I saw 11 a.m. You know, back in the days before they had LED digital clocks, you didn't see it, but you knew you were awake. Now you turn over and you see the LED digital clock. I saw 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. I saw 12. I saw 1 a.m. I saw 2 a.m. I saw 3 a.m. My eyes just, I would close them, but then I'd open them. It's like God is holding his eyes open. I'm so troubled. I don't even have the words to tell you what I'm going through, he says. I can't sleep. I can't speak. Something has got to give. I've considered the day as of old, of old, the years of ancient times. Pondering the good old days kind of sounds like uh, the children of Israel wishing they were back in Egypt like we talked about in Sunday school this morning. He ponders the good old days. And so at this point, we're going to recap uh, these first five verses. He says, I cried, I sought, I remembered, I complained, I can't sleep, I can't speak. And so I'm taking all this into consideration, and I'm looking for my revolver. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, this poor guy is there. He's got a relationship with God, but nothing seems like it's working and there's got to be a way out. And so he says in verse 6, I call to remembrance my song in the night. <laughs> I love this part. I commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. The Bible tells us that the innermost part of man is his heart. Um, it's not the muscle that pumps our blood. It's this the spirit that Jesus died to save. It's our innermost being. It's the area that connects to God in worship and in praise. It's the part that diligently can seek God. And he says, I call to remembrance my song in the night. Everybody should have a song. Now, many of you have a, a few Nola probably has a thousand, but you need to at least have one song, one song that you can connect with God even in your worst estate. I, I, I know I've shared with you guys that I have done this before over the years driving between here and Muskogee. When I was feeling depressed or discouraged, I would go through the alphabet and begin to sing Amazing Grace, Blessed Assurance, Calvary, Doxology, and you can't think of an E, you go to the F, you know, or whatever, right? But you need to have a song because as you begin to worship the Lord, what does the Bible say? The Lord inhabits the praises of his people, right? 
Now, when I think of theme songs, of course, I think of Batman. And then a Green Hornet. The Lone Ranger. Do it with me. Star Wars. And of course, now, there we go. Right, to name a few. Okay, and I'm not taking requests, Steve. Sorry. You need to have a theme song. Some of mine are on the Jericho Road. That's a really old-fashioned song, but the words are so good. On the Jericho Road, there's room for just two. No more, no less, just Jesus and you. Each burden he bears, each sorrow he shares, there's never a care, because Jesus is there. I can't even speak the words and feel goosebumps as I feel the presence of God, because life is the Jericho Road. And, and the Jericho Road can have trouble, but Jesus is there. Amen. Another one, great old hymn. No, not one. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Remember that? No, not one. No, not one. And then, of course, this one is probably not a typical song that people would think of as worship. But it's still a cool song. And the lyrics say, Central's never busy. Somebody said, now with cell phones, this is probably is a dated song, right? Somebody says, always on the line, you can hear from heaven just about any old time. Tis a royal service, free for one and all. I can talk to Jesus on that royal telephone. Telephone to glory, oh, what joy is mine. I can feel the current moving on the line. Okay, enough singing. Years ago, my dad was in St. Francis, I think it was, and it was a Sunday morning. It was before Faith Fellowship. I was actually preaching at one of my, my uncle's church out east of town, and uh, I went to church. They were expecting me to show up at the hospital that morning, and I went to church. And so we're there, and my brother Jimmy and my sister Joyce and I are around the bed and with my dad, and my sister says, uh, where have you been? Uh, what do you mean, where have I been? Well, I thought you would have been here by now. You know, when, when loved ones are in the hospital, emotions are high with family. Has anybody ever noticed that? It can get pretty ugly. She goes, well, you didn't even call. I said, well, I called Dr. Jesus on the royal telephone. He told me everything's going to be all right. And my brother started laughing. It just made her mad. So anyway, I, I digress. I'm sorry. Let's, let's stick, with the, stick with the script here. And so he's got this sleepless night. He cries, he seeks, he remembers, he complains, he can't sleep, he can't speak, he considers. And he says, I communed with my own heart, I which is diligently seeking. Communing is like just really connecting with God, trying to get a hold of God in all this mess. And so now he begins to ask questions. And that's okay. You're not really challenging God, you're just asking questions. This is what Gideon did. Be careful what you ask, though. Gideon wanted to know where, where all the miracles were and where the deliverer was, and God said, okay, how about you? Of course, he's hiding from the Midianites down in a, down in a pit at the time. And so be careful what you ask. And, and so in verse 7, he says, Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Notice the words, forever. You know, is this, am I going to be like, am I going to be in this state forever? I, I, am I never going to experience God's favor anymore, no more? I mean, this poor dude is, is, is down. Verse 8, is his mercy clean gone forever? Again, there's that forever. Does his promise fail forevermore? Gone forever, fail forevermore? Now, these are good questions because... Now he's starting to think about the nature and the character of God. Because God said his mercies are what? New every morning, right? So now he's beginning to actually challenge God with his word, right? It's okay to challenge God with his word. God, you told me, right? My loved ones will be saved. That's called standing on the word, right? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forever? Gone forever? Fail forever? The next question, has God forgotten to be gracious? God, did you forget to be gracious to me again? 
Has his anger shut up his tender mercies? I mean, think about it. Think about it. Here's another little cello. Stop and think about it. Is that really the nature of God? Has God forgotten? Is God mad at me? Has he shut up his mercies forever? And so, if I'm going to ask the questions rhetorically, then I have to answer them for God, don't I? So, God's favor, God's mercy, God's promises, God's graciousness, and not just his mercy, his tender mercy. This is God's reputation at stake. And so, now we come where everything's changing. Sometimes, those sleepless nights are there for a reason. Sometimes, maybe, just maybe, God is waiting for you to see something in your life that you haven't seen. And so now this sleepy, bloodshot-eyed psalmist says, this is my infirmity. I'm a sinner. Hey, remember that person I was rude to last week? Hey, remember my attitude to that other person? Remember, remember how I spoke to my wife last week? This is my infirmity. Notice all of this has been I, I, I cried to the Lord. I couldn't sleep. I didn't this. I didn't that. I didn't this. And now my infirmity. You can't really expect a change until you come to the place of confession. Okay, God, I'm sorry. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. So I own what I did, but I'm not going to live there and wallow in my sins. I'm going to confess them, and I'm going to remember what God did. Anytime you see right hand, or right arm in the Old Testament, that is a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. For he is the right hand of God. Sitting at the right hand. Anytime God does something in the Old Testament with his strong right hand, that was King Jesus doing it. Amen? And so I remember what God did. I know what God did on, a Cal on Mount Calvary 2,000 years ago for me. Amen? In verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. What has God done for me? And what did God do in the Bible days? Here's where everything starts to turn for this sleepless individual. First, he, find, he comes to the place of confession. And then he begins to reflect on what God has done for me. The well, Lord, you know, things may not be going my way, but you gave me three wonderful children. Lord, you blessed me with a good job and a good wife. Lord, you, 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 you kept me healthy all these years. And I'm going on, mm -hmm. right? And I have a congregation that loves me. You know, and you've got friends that love you. God, look what you've done. And then I begin to remember some of those great Bible stories. Why, Lord, you didn't forget Daniel in the lion's den. You closed the mouth of the lion's. You didn't forget Rack Shack and Benny, Lord. They, they didn't bend, they didn't bow, and they didn't burn. You didn't forget Noah in that ark. He didn't just stay there having to fish for a living. Lord, you remember your people. You remember them. You haven't forgot me. You haven't forgot any of us. You're still on the throne. God, you're in charge. And so he remembers the works of the Lord. And now he says in verse 12, and this is, where, this is where our exercise begins. I will meditate also on all the works and talk of your doing. It's a three-step process. You could call this not only uh, the end of sleepless nights. You could call it a cure for depression. You could call it cheering yourself up. You could call it victory over the flesh. You could call it anything you want. But they still have three parts after you confess. You can't do anything until you confess. If there's sin in your life, the Bible says, 
you know, my, my ear is not waxed hard, my arm is not too short, but your sins have separated you from me, so you have to confess. But after you confess, you come to these, these three principles here. First of all, you've got to remember the goodness of God. You've got to meditate on the goodness of God. And then you've got to speak about the goodness of God. If you just remember it, you'll just forget it because we forget. That's why God said, tell it to your children and your children's children because it's important that people remember the goodness of God. And you cannot remember it if you don't meditate on it. You know, you can get up in the morning and read a, a psalm or read five chapters in your Bible and pray. And then if you don't meditate it on through the rest of the day, you won't have victory in your life. You say, well, I read my Bible. Why is everything going so bad? Because you have to meditate on it. You have to have the mind of Christ. You have to. Uh, Sister Jeannie Mayo, the lady I got saved under, used to compare it to a cow who chooses his cud. Now, I wasn't raised on a farm like Miss Nola and some of you guys. So when she first said this, I had no idea that cows had multiple stomachs and that they would regurgitate their food just to chew and get more yummy juices out of it. That's kind of disgusting if you ask me. But for some reason, Jeannie Mayo wanted me to remember this illustration, and I have remembered it these umpteen years. And so when I read the word in the morning, if I am prone to forget, I should write it on a card, and if not, a piece of paper and stick it in my pocket and through the day bring it out and meditate on it and bring it back up again and chew on it and get some more juices out of it. And then that's even then it's not enough to just read it and remember it and meditate on it because words of my mouth program my heart. If I say I'm stupid all the time, guess what? I'm going to be stupid. If I say I'm poor all the time, I'm going to be poor. But if the Lord says I am righteous, then I am. If the Lord says I am blessed, then I am. If the Lord says I'm more than a conqueror in this world, then I am. Yes, I am. Oh, I am. I am. I'm, I have victory in Jesus. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. One will send a thousand in flight, two ten thousand, many will fall at my side, it will not come nigh to me. Shake it off and make the devil take it back. Speak the word. Remember the centurion came to Jesus to heal. Jesus said, I'll go. He said, don't go, just speak the word. I'm a man of authority, I know. He understood authority more than the Jews did. He said, I haven't seen this kind of faith in all of Israel. This guy wasn't even a Jew. He understood the power of the spoken word. And God has given us his word to speak. Not to think only about, but to speak and call the things that are not as though they are. Amen. And so, this sleepless man cried and sought and remembered and complained. He couldn't sleep, he couldn't speak, he considered. And then he confessed and then after he confessed, he remembered what God did. And so he remembered, and he meditated, and he spoke. And then this begins then to usher in praise. Have you ever not felt like praising the Lord? Now, obviously, you praise the Lord whether you feel like it or not, but isn't feeling so much better than, than just not feeling? Don't you like to have those goosebumps and the tears and the joy and the peace? and all that right and so sometimes the reason we don't experience that emotional worship is because we haven't been doing our homework before we come to church right we haven't been doing those three things well four if you want to count confess the sin but then you know uh, remembering and meditating and speaking and so you know don't come to church expecting the pastor to prop up prop you up if you haven't done your homework all week long so that you can have an emotional experience on Sunday morning. Ouch. Can't say amen, say ouch. But you need to do this yourself. You don't go all week and not eat and come here and fill up on donuts. I'm not looking at you, Lloyd. But you eat all week long, and so it is. And so it is. Yeah, okay, he's pointing. All right, no, no finger pointing here. And so it is. 
we do the same. We keep our slate clean. We read. We remember. We meditate. And we speak. And then the praises come. Hallelujah. The praises come. Thy way, O God, is in your sanctuary. Who is so great as God is our God. And so now the psalmist is getting Pentecostal. He is getting excited. He is praising the God, praising God for what he's done. Now he can't sleep because he's praising God and he don't even care anymore. Amen. And then he begins to talk. Now this is Old Testament stuff, but remember Jesus is the what? Right hand, right? Right arm of God. Thou art the God that does wonders. You have declared your strength among the people. Verse 15. You have with your arm redeemed your people. And Jesus is our redeemer, isn't he? The sons of Jacob and Joseph. Think about it. Think about your redemption. Aren't you glad you're saved this morning? Aren't you glad your name is written in heaven? Jesus said, don't rejoice that demons are subject to you, but that your name is written in heaven. Praise God. You know what? We can't even fathom what's ahead. I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered in the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Did he say those that are perfect, those that don't sin? No, those that love him. You know, I love that verse because I don't always do things right, but I love Jesus this morning. How many love Jesus? It's hard not to love someone who first loved you. The waters saw you, O oh God, the waters saw you, and they were afraid. The depths were so troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies sent the sound. The arrows also went abroad. The voice of your thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lighted the world. The earth trembled and shook. Now what does this have to do with anything? He's God. Your Father in heaven is God. He can part the sea. He can... He, he can walk on the water. If you keep your eyes on Him, you can walk on the water to Him like Peter. He's God. You know, when we look at the headlines and we look at where the world's going, you say, oh, the world is just going to hell in a handbasket. God is still in control. All of this doesn't catch God by surprise. The, 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 the clouds pour out rain and the thunder and the lightning. And you look at the majesty of when lightning storms are coming. You say, that's my Father. He's God. Your way is in the sea. Your path is, is in the great waters. Your footsteps are not known. You lead your people like a flock by the hand of Moses. And of course, Moses was a type of our shepherd, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And he's still leading his people today. He leads us beside the still waters he restores our soul surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life and we you and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever amen and guess what now we're going to sleep like babies amen hallelujah let's give the lord a hand clap of praise Amen. Come on up, Nola. God is good, isn't he? So let me tell you about Jesus. Who is so great a God as he? This is the last part of the psalm here. You know, this, this is really bragging about the Lord for us. You declare your strength among the people. You redeem me. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You, you, you save me, the waters. You lead me, Jesus. You're my good shepherd. And, and, and so, if you find yourself, as we probably will, before the Lord comes someday, lying in bed on a sleepless night, grab your phone if you have a smartphone. Go to ffcth.org and look for sleepless nights if you forget these three points. And if you remember them, more importantly, just do them. Amen. Amen. Just say, Lord, is there any sin in my life that I need to confess? And then begin to remember, meditate, chew it a little bit. And then it doesn't matter if, if no one's around or someone's around. Go in the other room. Don't wake somebody up. Just begin to talk out loud and say, Lord, I thank you 
that you said that you would never leave me or forsake me. Just begin to quote the word back to the Lord out loud. Words of your mouth program your heart. And look what God can do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your word. The psalmist reminded us that at times even God's children have sleepless nights. But in the midnight hour, Lord, our agony can turn to praise as we reflect, as we remember, and as we begin to just speak your word. We thank you, Lord, for the glorious relationship we have in you. Our Heavenly Father, the God of wonders, and our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, who leads us like a shepherd through this journey called life. We give you praise this morning. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship the Lord with us as we close. Oh, let the sound of God enfold you with a speed. Me. Mm-hmm.